Greetings, everybody. I'm Dr. Sushant Swami. I'm a consultant dermatologist working at Tolasi The Skin Clinic in Bangalore. I'm going to talk about acne or pimples. About 85% of the world's population is affected by acne at some point. According to one study, 96% of those people affected by acne report feeling depressed because of the acne. What is acne? Acne is basically the inflammation and infection of the sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are these oil-producing glands of the skin. These sebaceous glands are present in large numbers in the T-zone of the face, which would include the forehead, the top of the nose, and the chin. They're also present in large numbers on the chest, on the upper back, and the shoulder. So these are the areas which are most prone for the development of acne. So sebaceous glands produce this oil known as sebum. The oil that is produced by the sebaceous gland, sebum, flows through the sebaceous duct and then onto the surface of the skin. But sometimes what happens is that this sebum gets accumulated within the sebaceous glands. This can happen either due to an overproduction of the sebum by the gland or due to a blockage of the duct. In either case, accumulated sebum within the sebaceous glands is seen clinically as comedones or whiteheads and blackheads. Now this accumulated sebum is rich in nutrition. So certain bacteria can start growing in this accumulated sebum. When this happens, the immune system in the skin mounts an immune response against the bacteria. This results in a pimple, a reddish lesion on the skin. And as this inflammatory response gets more intense, white blood cells start get accumulated in this lesion, uh, leading to the formation of pustules. In some, some cases, the inflammatory response mounted by the skin can be so intense that one will have painful, tender, firm nodules in the skin, known as the nodulocystic type of acne. Now, this is the type of acne that is the most severe type of acne that we must treat right away because this can result in permanent scarring, which can be more of a challenge to treat later on. There are a few triggers for acne that once when we understand will help have an acne free period because the triggers for acne in each individual is, uni is unique to that individual. The most common trigger for acne is of course adolescence or puberty. In puberty, there is a sudden surge of androgen hormones in the body. This causes a sudden increase in the amount of sebum being produced and also causes a clogging of the pores, the perfect recipe for the development of acne. This kind of acne which has its onset during adolescence usually subsides substantially by the age of about 25 to 27 years of age. Another common trigger for acne is the consumption of high glycemic index food. High glycemic index food is food that causes a sudden spike in the level of blood sugar after its consumption. They're usually food which are rich in simple sugars, such as chocolates, biscuits, chips, uh, french fries, potatoes. Basically, junk food is what one has to avoid in order to uh, not have episodes of acne. Another very strongly associated condition with acne is the polycystic ovarian disease. Now, this is a condition that affects many women. It is a condition that is characterized by the presence of irregular menstrual cycles, the presence of facial hair uh, in women, obesity in women. Of course, uh, acne is another a common manifestation of PCOD. Now, PCOD is due to something known as insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance happens after one starts to gain weight because more amount of fat tissue in the body means the body needs to produce more amount of insulin that has to be in circulation in the body to sustain that fat. Now, this extra amount of insulin that is in circulation has other side effects such as irregular menstrual cycles, um, acne and facial hair. So what one has to do when one is faced with PCOD uh, is just to lose all that weight. And once one loses about 15 or 20 percent of one's body weight, if one is obese, one's acne problems will just disappear along with the other problems associated with PCOD. Another common trigger for acne is the usage of cosmetic products. Cosmetic products can cause clogging of the pores resulting in the development of acne. 
So if one does have to use cosmetic products, I would advise that you use products that have been labeled non-comedogenic. So what are the measures that one can take uh, to decrease the severity or the number of episodes of acne that one has? Well, one can start using these exfoliating face washes about two to three times a week. That should be sufficient, which will help in unclogging the pores. And of course, avoid using cosmetics. And if you are using cosmetics, use cosmetics which are non-comedogenic. Of course, avoid using, uh, avoid consuming junk food. And when none of these things works, consult with a dermatologist because it is important to reduce the psychological burden of acne. And in many people, treating acne means preventing the formation of permanent scars. So when you meet a dermatologist, depending on the grade of acne that you are being faced with, we can start off with topical therapy, uh, basically medicines that are, that are applied to the face. We have antibiotics, which will help deal with the bacterial infection of the glands. Uh, we have chemical peels. The most effective peel is the salicylic acid peel because it has an affinity for these oil producing glands itself. So it can be used to specifically target uh, acne. Salicylic acid has anti-inflammatory properties, which means it will bring down the inflammation within the skin, decrease the intensity of the acne episode. It also has antibacterial properties, which means it will kill the bacteria. And of course, salicylic acid is known to cause exfoliation of the skin, which means that it will cause unclogging of any clogged pores. So this works best in the comedonal type of acne, uh, the acne that is characterized by the presence of blackheads and whiteheads. Another very effective topical therapy is with retinoids. Retinoids are these vitamin A derivative compounds. They decrease the production of sebum by the sebaceous glands. They prevent the clogging of the sebaceous glands pores. These are a little more aggressive form of treatment because apart from decreasing the production of sebum, they also cause dryness of the skin, which can be severe in some. And some people are known to be hypersensitive to retinoids. When none of the topical methods helps in the management of acne, we go on to give oral treatments. Oral treatments, uh, of course, we have antibiotics, which will help kill the bacteria again. And in individuals who are suffering from polycystic ovarian disease or any other kind of hormonal imbalances, hormonal therapy is very effective. And of course, we have isotretinoin, a personal favorite of mine because the results are almost permanent. Once one has been treated with isotretinoin, one will not have another lesion for about two to five years. And even if one does, it will be very mild. Isotretinoin acts by causing a miniaturization of the sebaceous glands, which means that all the sebaceous glands in your body will be rendered non-functional which means that there will be no oil production, so there is no uh, way that one can develop acne. But then isotretinoin treatment is associated with a bunch of side effects, which are present only during the course of the treatment, uh, which can be a little severe in some people. And therefore this is reserved only for the most severe type of acne, the nodulocystic acne. So this was about acne. Thank you very much.